Hello folks, this is Mighty Scon here with another episode of Arcanum. So we are going to learn about Nazrudin and the Panar religion today and find out what to do next. So we are now in the Panari temple Wait. in Caladon. Do you see that man? The one at the front of the temple? Yes, who is that? That's Alexander, first acolyte of the Panari church. I never thought I'd actually lay eyes on him. What about him? The man's a living legend. Joaquim used to tell me stories about him. Not a nobler soul in all of Arcanum, it said. And he's a skilled warrior as well. Not the sort you want to tangle with. All right, let's uh, talk to him. This is the guy we need to talk to anyways. Oh, it's you. You finally come. The blimp crash survivor. I saw your picture in the Tarantian. I am Alexander, first acolyte of the temple. It's a great pleasure to meet you. What are you talking about? Do you have any idea what that means? It's you. You are the living one. It's a miracle. Let's not blow this out of proportion. Out of proportion, this is an astronomical event. The return of Nazrudin, the final battle, the end of all we know, and a new beginning. The most amazing. Fine, I'm the living one. Do as I say and shut up. Of course, of course. Forgive my excitement, exalted one. We have waited for you for a long time. Let's keep this between us. Of course, but you must listen to me. We were warned by the high priest to expect your arrival, and he told us to scorn you as an imposter. For some reason, he refuses to believe. I can understand his position. The whole thing is a bit odd. There are times when all of us find it difficult to follow the path chosen for us. In the end, does it really matter if you were or weren't? You seem an in intent on discovering what has happened. And already, you and Aranox have crossed paths. If you thwart his plan, you will have played the role of the Living One. Is there any difference in the end? I suppose not. I just wish people would stop trying to kill me. I'm not worried. You've come this far regardless of what you think. I feel that fate has chosen a worthy champion. Now, how can I be of further service? Yes, what can I expect from the people around here? You should be very careful about who you reveal yourself to. If you speak with Hadrian the archaeologist, you may not want to tell him he's a great man of faith, but he is old. Belief in you will come slowly. Carnthor Willingham is a brilliant man and open to new ideas. I believe he will accept you immediately. Thank you, I'll remember that. A few more questions? Of course, honored one. I live to serve. What can you tell me about the Panari Church? What would you like to know? What can you tell me about Nazrudin? What would you like to know about him? Where is he now? Nazrudin has been dead for more than 2,000 years. How did he die? Nazrudin died after he and the council banished Aranax at the Ring of Brodger. Nazrudin was wounded mortally in the battle which preceded the banishment and died not long after. Where did he die? According to the Archeon, Nazrudin traveled to the southernmost tip of the, of the land and there laid himself to rest. That is why we are here. This, Panar this temple is built over his remains. Oh really? And where might I find these remains? The remains of Nazrudin are just below us, in the lower catacombs. There is a stairway through the doors behind me. It leads down to the burial chamber and the sarcophagus in which he is encased. Unfortunately, only church elders and pilgrims are allowed to see the remains. I have some more questions about Nazrudin. What are the teachings of Nazrudin? What would you like to know about them? Are there scriptures to study? 
There are many writings we study, but most important book of Panari religion is the Archeon. It is a collection of what are considered the most representative teachings of Nazruddin, as well as some prophecies that were made in the early years following his death. What are some of its prophecies? There are many prophecies, the most heavily debated are those concerning the return of both Aranox and Nazruddin. And what do your prophecies say of this? This is what we call the return of the living one. And I quote, Nazruddin's pure spirit will be reborn on wings of fire in hills shrouded in fog and fight the final battle with the evil one. You see, the return of Nazruddin, who we call the living one, will be a time of rejoicing, but also a time of darkness, as it heralds also the return of Aranax, the evil one. A few more questions about the Panari. I have some questions about Aranax. Where is he now? Aranex was banished by Nazardin and the council after a large battle near the Ring of Brodger. Aranex had waged war against the council. It is speculated that he had tried to wrest control of the council from Nazardin for his own purposes. Nazardin died from wounds he received in that battle. You say he was banished, what does that mean? When someone is banished, they are sent to what is known as the Void. And the void, what is it? Well, my friend, that in er is an area of some debate. Many say that the void is an actual place, a plane of existence where the evil pay for their transgressions for all of eternity. Others say that the void is merely a state of unbeing, not a physical place. What is known is that when someone is banished, they are no longer here and they cannot come back. I happen to know that some do come back from the void. Oh really? And just how would you know that? Because I've spoken with someone who's done so. And who exactly has done so? Let's tell him the story. So you're telling me you were the sole survivor in the crash of the IFS Zephyr? Yes. Do you have any idea what this meant? <laughs> we already heard this. Okay. We might see a copy of the Archeon. The Archeon is just over there. The large book on the pedestal. Feel free to pursue its pages and gain the wisdom where it is to be found. If you'd like to discuss anything you find confusing or unclear, I'd be happy to oblige you. I must be departing. Let's go uh, read this book. Okay, so we've read that. Who else can I speak to concerning Panari history? Where might I find them? 
each of them have offices through these doors behind me. When we're finished speaking, I will open the doors for you. I must go. Okay, so we need to uh, talk to him. Greetings, and who are you? Is uh, Wilhelm Gunther a pleasure? What exactly do you do here? I'm the church historian. I have a variety of responsibilities here from translations to document restorations as well as authentication and any literary finds. If it is written and has to do with the Panari, it's my job to know about it. Does that answer your question? Yes, very well. Tell me of some of your work. I had some questions about the remains of Nazardin. What do you know about them? I know very little about them, save the document we have associated with their discovery and a few research documents about the sarcophagus itself. Adrian, the archaeologist, would have more information about the specifics. Do you think that they are authentic? To tell you the truth, I really don't know. I've done a lot of research into the engravings on the sarcophagus. Everything seems to be in order. It just seems to me that it's all very convenient. I mean, who buried him? We have no records of that. There's no doubt of that an elf of his stature would have been given an elaborate burial, but who did it? We don't know. Do the church records say who discovered them? Yes, let me see. Ah. Here. Here we are. An elf named Kanhua. What are you currently working on? Currently I'm doing some research on older translations of the Archeon. I have found some interesting discrepancies that I am looking into. Discrepancies? What do you mean? There are a few differences in some of the passages that I've found in this earlier copy. I'll give you an example. The Archeon we read today prefers to our order as the Panari. The word Panari in the old tongue means light, servant, or follower. But in the older copy I'm studying, we are referred to as the Panrenus, which means defender of the gate. Very odd. Interesting. Was there anything else? A few minor things I'm still working on. The translations, perhaps it's something we can speak of later. Of course. There's a statue in the courtyard. Who is that? The statue of Saint Mannix, one of the earlier elders of the church. Why was he made a saint? Saint Mannix was the only person reputedly to have ascended. That is, the spirit of Nazrudin appeared and took his body directly from this plane of existence to the next. You say reputedly, Gunther. Do you not believe? There is no doubt in my mind that Mannix was a very holy man. My belief in an inconclusive set of circumstances does not invalidate that fact, regardless of how that might reflect on my own faith. Were there any eyewitnesses to the event? There were two eyewitnesses to the ascension of Mannix. One was an elf named Randar, and the other, what was his name, Khan Hawaii. I believe their accounts of the incident were almost exactly the same, and both were beautifully written. Kanhua, is that the same person who found the remains? Well, yes, it's at least the same name. Let me look at the years. The discovery of the remains happened within a few years of the ascension of St. Mannix. I never realized that, but you're correct. That very well might be the same person. Don't you find it strange, perhaps a little convenient? You're very curious about the whole affair, my friend. What's your real interest in this? It's a long tale. 
I see. You're telling me that you are the sole survivor of the IFS Zephyr blimp crash? Yes. I was wondering when you were going to tell me. I've been looking for you for a long time, you know. The rumors are bound and we'd heard you might come calling. I'm so very glad you decided to put your trust in me. Thank you, Gunther. I really need to see those remains. Listen, my friend, not everyone here is sympathetic to your cause. Adrian the archaeologist is the one who you need to speak with. But be very careful. He's an old and loyal friend. But belief in you will come slowly for him. He will be the best source of information regarding the remains and how you might see them. But tread lightly. Subterfuge might be necessary. I'll remember that, Gunther. Thank you for your help. No, thank you, my friend. Return here when you have seen the remains and tell me what you find. I may be able to help you once you know what you're looking for. I will. Goodbye. Let's go talk to uh, Hadrian. Hello, and who might you be? Call me Hadrian, the acolyte of the Panari and the local expert on church archaeology. How might I help you? Greetings, I am Mighty Scan. Might I speak with you for a moment? Certainly. Let's talk about your work. What would you like to know? Tell me about some of the objects you have here. What would you like to know about? The glass device. We don't have any idea what it is. It sure is pretty though. Huh. Black gem. This is the Eye of Krakator. Really, it's a beautiful stone. No, I mean really, the Eye of Krakator. When the council was banishing him, he put up quite a struggle. Somehow the monster's eye got popped out. And someone found it as they were cleaning up. Dreadful creature Krakator was. If you ask Alexander about who's been banished over the years, he'll tell you the story. Perhaps I'll do that. The skeleton finger. This is the finger of St. Mannix. His finger, why is that here? Legend tells of a time when St. Mannix had been captured by barbarians. They were plundering the surrounding countryside and were holding Mannix for ransom. He told his people to refuse, so the barbarians threatened to cut off one of his fingers if he didn't comply. Mannix calmly picked up a knife told them there would be no ransom and cut it off himself. Sounds like a hard man. Yes, he was when he needed it to be. Is there anything else you need to know? Any more questions about the remains of Nazrudin? Um, where are they? Your house in the old catacombs beneath the temple. The first acolyte, Alexander, can direct you there if you have problems finding it. Have you seen them? No, and I'd do anything to see those old bones of his. There are so many questions I could answer if I can only have a look at them. When he died, how he died, I want to know if the skeletal structure is the same as common elves or if prolonged use of powerful magic changed him somehow. So many questions and I've never been able to see them. Why, Hadrian? You're the church archaeologist, surely you... Yes, you'd think so, wouldn't you, young man? I mean, when the elders need someone to go digging in a dank cavern of the Bengalian depths, who do they call upon? Or if some poor fool comes across a tomb sealed with a Gorgothian blood curse, ring the bell for an old Hadrian. But why won't they let you see the remains, Hadrian? I have no idea. They speak of discretion and sacrilege, but the man is dead. I respect and cherish Nazrudin and what he taught us more than anyone, but I hardly think he'd be upset if I chipped a piece of bone from his earthly shell. I see your point. I myself would love to take a look at them. Really? Are you a fellow archaeologist, my friend? If you have the persuasion, you can convince him that you are an archaeologist. No, but I let's say I have an interest in Azrudin's resting place. Right. Well, I can't say I could help you. i never seen the remains, so I doubt they're going to let a stranger walk in 
and start rattling his bones. I'm sorry, but I think you're on your own. I see. Well, good day to you. Wait, yes. Look, if someone's looking for an inconspicuous way into the burial room, and they happen to be roaming around in the sewers, they might just find a way into the old catacombs. Who knows what they might find down there. Ah. And if someone were to find something like a piece of Nazrudin skeleton, a particular archaeologist might be interested in taking a look. I'll look around, and if I find anything, I'll bring it back. You do that, my friend? Is there anything else? Right, let's go talk to Alexander. Uh, hello, hello, Alexander. Do you have time for questions? Uh, I've been uncovering some strange things. Tell him what Gunther told you about Kanhua. Hmm, this is an interesting fact. Perhaps there's something amiss here. Was there anything else? There are a few more strange things. That is strange, my friend, but it seems a fairly trivial thing. Small difference is almost every tradition. That is strange, my friend, but it seems a fairly trivial thing. There are small differences in almost every translation. This is probably just an honest mistake. Was there anything else? Uh, I'm gonna go. All right, let's go to the sewers and into uh, the sarcophagus area. So to get there, it's pretty easy. Just go right here. Okay, so you can go uh, this way, but all I have to do is go through this little passage right here. This will take us to the tomb. So there is a door here, and if you were persuasive enough to tell Gunther that you were an archaeologist, he would give you the password to get in. Since we're not, the only option we have is to go around or fight the people from this door. Alright, the door is open now, so we can go on to the tomb. Here's the sarcophagus. Here's the skull. Alright, let's go talk to Hadrian now. Adrian, can you spare a few minutes? I returned from the crypt. Splendid, come tell me what you found. Retrieve the skull. Skull, wonderful. May I see it? Of course. Thank you, this is an exciting moment. We will be able, the first people to lay their eyes upon Nazrudin for more than 2,000 years. The things we will know. Wait, hold on a moment. What is this? What's wrong? This skull, you say this is the very skull from the sarcophagus? In the burial chamber? Are you sure? Yes, I'm positive. What is the matter? The skull is not even elven, it's a human skull. This is impossible. There were some strange things about what I saw. What? Something has was drawn in blood on the inside of the sarcophagus. What was it? You say it was drawn in blood? I don't know what this symbolizes, nor what why I would be there. The word sounds like ancient panorim, 
an ancient language used by the early church elders. It hasn't been used for centuries, but Gunther Wilhelm is an expert, and he would know what it means. If it was drawn there by, oh god, they buried him alive. I noticed that the skeleton was also missing from its right finger. His right finger. You know what that means, though? No, it couldn't be. What, Hadrian? What are you talking about? One of the objects I have here is Finger of Manax. There's a legend associated with it. That it was never known if the finger was actually that of the great saint. It would seem that it might very well be. Are you saying that the body in the sarcophagus is Manax? I don't know. Good God. Why? Why would they have buried him in the tomb of Nazardin? I just... What are you going to do? I have no idea this discovery. I'm speechless. 2,000 years and no one ever even bothered to check. What fools have we been? Listen, my friend, I recommend you go to speak with Gunther about this. Find out what the message says. I can be of no further use. I'll get to the bottom of this, Hadrian, I promise. Perhaps this is a stone better left unturned, and my friend, it's not every day that one is faced with the negation of his belief. I'm so very sorry, Hadrian. I take my leave. Hello again, Gunther. Have you a moment? I've discovered something about the remains of Nazrudin. I will come back. I take it you've spoken with Hadrian. Have you found what is you were looking for? I found something, but I don't know what it means. Interesting. It seems that the proverbial wool has been pulled over our eyes, but for what reason? I suppose it could be that the early church elders believed that an ascension story might strengthen the people's beliefs, but at the cost of another man's life? I find that very difficult to believe, but I have found something that I believe may confirm those remains are false. What, what did you find? Oh, wait, there was something else. I have no idea what that broken ring represents. But the two words are written in Old Panarum, a dead language that the was once used by church elders. The first word means mirror and or opposite. The second word means truth. As for the meaning of the whole message, I'm at, at a loss. I think we can assume that Mannix was trying to tell us something. And what did you find, Gunther? You remember I told you that I was working on older translations? I found another passage from it that is inconsistent with the Archeon we read today. Have you heard the passage where it talks about the final resting place of Nazruddin? Yes, Alexander told me. Well, today's Archeon reads, Nazruddin traveled to the southernmost tip of the land and there laid himself to rest. The copy I've been translating says almost the exact same thing except for one slight difference. It reads, Nazruddin crossed the waters and traveled to the southernmost tip of the land. What are you saying, Gunther? I'm saying that I don't think Nazrudin was buried here in Caledon. I may have always just assumed that the scriptures were speaking of the mainland. And of course, when the remains were found, no one ever bothered to look again. So where are his remains? The southernmost tip of any land in Arcanum is the Isle of Thantos, to the south of here. I think that is where you next should go. I might ask you a favor. If you have the time before you leave, perhaps you could uncover the truth behind St. Mannix. There are men here who would be interested in finding the responsible party. I may do that, but why do you think they did all this? I don't know, my friend. Perhaps there was something about the actual remains of Nazruddin which they are afraid of. You should seek out the final resting place, and there, I think, you will find your answers. I will, Gunther, and thank you, and good day. Good luck to you. All right, so let's go to Roseboro, and then wrap up this uh, episode. All right, here we are in the town of Roseboro again, and we're gonna find out what happened to St. Mannix and why the remains of Nasdrudin are not uh, elven. So here's the, what we're looking for. This stone here 
And you can see it says the stone was found in the middle of the Ring of Brodger, okay? The meaning of the markings on its face are unknown. It has been moved to here to protect it. So we have to keep that in mind that this was meant to be started from the middle of the Ring of Brodger. So on the stone, um, it's just a stone with oddly carved ruins and numbers. We click on it. We get these uh, directions. Now, if we look at our book, we remember that the book, it says uh, the first word means opposite. Second word means truth. So what you have to do is take these and then kind of get the opposite directions from them. So like northeast, northwest, uh, southwest. So with that, you start from the Ring of Brodger. So let's go there. The Ring of Brodger is up here in this little uh, this passageway here. Right there. So we start from the middle. And we have to go in the opposite direction. Um, I would suggest writing these down, or if you follow along with this video, you'll know exactly where to go. And you don't, you don't have to actually remember how far you have to go. Because I'll show you why in a second. There are little markers everywhere. And they kind of indicate exactly where to go. So the first direction uh, we need to go is to the northeast, 30. So let's start from here, we go to the northeast, 30. You can see this little uh, marker. So this is the first marker we go to. Then we go to the northwest, 40. You kind of loop around a little bit. Um, here's the 40 one right here. For some reason, if you click on this, it doesn't, it stops. Then we go to the southwest, 20, which is this one right here. Then we go 15 to the northwest, this one right here. Then we go 30 southwest, this one right here. So you kind of see where we're, what we're doing here. We're just going from marker to marker. And we go northwest 50. It's going to be kind of out of the range here. Uh, there it is over here. I'm assuming these are 50 paces, like 50 steps. Then we go 15 this way. Then we go back this way. Then we go down this way. This one right here. So if you just follow the coastline, actually, and go to this marker, which is not too far away from the coastline, then just go straight up from there. 50. So somewhere around here, this wheel. So you just, uh, from Roseboro, you just follow the coastline until you find this wheel. That's the simplest thing to do. And on the wheel, we click on it. And since we know the password because we've read the book, it's truth. So now we can uh, loot this vault here. And oh, she I just took the item. What'd she just take? Okay, I don't know if she grabbed, she grabbed something. Oh, okay, Sword of Maddox. So that's Manic's sword, and then we have um, How may I help you? The book too. Journal of Saint Manix. Read that. Okay, so in this book is the journal of uh, Manix, and Manix kind of goes through. Um, the story of how things were before the elf named Kanhua was uh, came down from the mountains and appeared and started kind of hijacking the religion. Uh, Mannix was there to preserve the wards, and that was the purpose. He even talks about meeting Nazrudin, um, which he calls a uh, physical manifestation of Nazrudin, which probably would be the actual Nazrudin came in and checked up on the wards. Make sure that they were working. And the physical man, Nazrudin actually even said he's not divine. Which Manix, you know, being uh, a devout person himself, kind of shrugged that off saying he is divine. I know he is. Anyways, um, so it kind of goes through the, uh, uh, the, the story of 
what happened with Mannix. So let's uh, just get out of here. Um, and let's bring this back to the temple and talk with the guys there. All right, so here we are in the temple. Let's talk to our good friend, uh, Hadrian. Is he the one that tasks us with this? Oh no, I think it was um, Gunther. Let's talk to Gunther first. Hello Gunther, do you have a moment? What would you like to know? I've discovered the truth about Mannix. Is that so? And what is that? Here's a journal. It seems that we have been misled from the beginning. And now I see why we were first called the Defenders of the Gate. It seemed we have a great responsibility. We shall begin to live up to that. What do you think I should know? I should do now. Well, if you haven't already, please go and tell Alexander what you have found. I would think that he's going to want to have a very long talk with some of his superiors. I'm glad I'm not the one. Not, I'm not one of them. I'll do so. Farewell. Let's talk to Hadrian. Hadrian, I found the whole truth. What? Tell him the story of Mannix. Anger fuzz in his eyes of Hadrian. The man truly was a saint, a saint and a warrior, and it seems that we, Panari, have been neglecting our true duties. That will no longer be the case. Thank you, my friend. You've done this church and the world a great service. Glad to be of service, Hadrian. As a token of my appreciation, I feel free to take the objects in the display cases. I can't tell you what they'd be good for, but they're yours, all the same. The cases will be open now. Thank you very much. Uh, would you do me a favor? Speak with Alexander of these things if you haven't done so already. I'm an old man and tired, and there is little I can do to right this wrong, but Alexander is strong and the strongest of us all, and will know what to do. I envy not the man who Alexander finds responsible. I'll do that, Hadrian. All right, so we get uh, the two main ones. I don't really know what this finger of Manix is you're gonna be used for, but this you can take to with you to the void and give it to Krakator, who's somebody you find in the void. Um, if we were evil, I'd grab this. We definitely want this though. This is the key to the Iron Clan. So we're gonna take that for us for sure. If we need to, we can come back and get the uh, Krakator eye. That's more for uh, an, an evil character. So let's talk to Alexander, and then we'll, we'll wrap up this episode. The name of Nazrudin. I welcome you, my friend. How can I help you today? Hello, Alexander. Do you have time for a question? Of course, honored one. I live to serve. I have something very important to tell you, Alexander. What? What did you find? I found Mannix's journal. Alexander is silent for a long time, then. It seems we the Panari have an important responsibility. Many of your troubles, living one, were born because we allowed ourselves to be deceived for so many years. That will be no longer, and it seems that my family has been deceived and dishonored. I think I know to whom I must speak about this. He looks in the direction of the high priest chambers. Uh... I also found this, so we give him Mannix's sword. I never hoped to see this. It was lost so many years ago. It will be put to good use, I can assure you. I'm sure, good luck. Thank you, living one. Your help here has been invaluable. I wish you luck on your quest and the, in the conflict to come. Goodbye. Okay, so we have completed the quests that we were tasked to complete. And we've uh, talked about the uh, what happened to Mannix. So what, what we're tasked to do now is actually go to the Isle of Thantos. So it's actually going to be... Uh, it takes longer to get there than it does to actually 
complete the Alathantos. Uh, we actually did get a point for that, for completing and returning the sword to Alexander. In the next episode, we will find a way to get to the Isle of Thantos and then discover what actually happened to Nazrudin there. I right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.